Mixing with Mike career building tip. Take the first step. I recently uh, was watching television and I heard a, uh, a quote uh, from uh, Martin Luther King, a uh, civil rights leader here, um, for those of you who are uh, maybe uh, not as familiar with uh, history in the U.S., I have uh, listeners from all over the world, that um, uh, he was a civil rights leader uh, in the 60s. Uh, he was actually assassinated. Uh, here in the United States, and many believe for his uh, belief systems. But he spoke many truths uh, that uh, that go way beyond uh, the civil rights movement, uh, which he was the biggest part of. And uh, and those truths carry on into everything that we do, and this is what leads into this career building tip. And um, without totally butchering um, his original quote, and, and rather than getting the exact quote, I'll kind of paraphrase, but more or less, he was defining faith. And he said, faith is taking the first step when you can't see the end of the staircase. And that's such a powerful truth, because when you actually take the first step in a career, and there are many first steps that you take, and I'll explain this as I tell a little bit of a personal story here, uh, as to why this is the case. Now, um, you, when you start off on a journey, you have no way of knowing all the steps, what they're exactly going to be like, and what the destination is going to look like. And if you did, you probably would never take the journey to begin with. And that's part of what makes it so enriching and so valuable. So to go back to my personal story, I'm going to take myself, take you back to when I was in college. And this was in the early 80s. It was in my second year of college. And I was listening to the radio, and I heard a voice on the radio, and I was like, oh my God, who is that? And I found it was Whitney Houston. And I went immediately uh, out to the record store. I bought her record. It was her first album. And uh, I was listening to the record, looking at the album cover. And I remember distinctly thinking, and I believe I said out loud, it's like, I'm going to work with her. And what was really interesting about that, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't this thing like, okay, I'm going to get into this obsessive, compulsive, insane thing. I probably would have gotten arrested if that was the case. But I, I actually had this real thoughts like, oh my God, like there was this connection. There was this real inspiration from that. Now, the way that this plays into the first step, because that wasn't the first step. That was just sort of an inspired moment. I heard something that um, moved me so much, and I was um, so interested in that, that it inspired me to look into something that I had never really considered. And this was a career in music production and engineering. Now, as a, as a child growing up and listening to music, I would listen to records for hours and hours and hours, and I would just, was so into, I would sit on the floor in front of the speakers of, you know, my uh, parents' stereo system, and I would just, like, get into so much, like, the detail, the depth, the separation of the instruments, all the stuff that was in between the instruments, and being able to hear the individual parts, and I just enjoyed that so much, but never understood that most other people didn't really listen to music that way until I got to college. And um, at that time, my second year in college, I was already supposed to have declared my major after the first year, and I had kept putting it off. And finally, they cornered me and said, look, you got to pick a major if you want to continue in the school. So I looked at the whole curriculum, and what I realized was that if I took the music production and engineering course, I could still take all the arranging and performance classes and almost everything else in it that the school had to offer. Um, so I decided to do a music production major. And uh, five minutes into my first class, which was really about acoustics and the math of, of, of sound, I realized it's like, oh my God, this is what I'm going to do. It was like amazing. It was just like such a real thing to me. And that was my first step. My first step was deciding to take that, not knowing what that meant. I had no idea. I've seen credits for producers and engineers, but I didn't know what that meant. And I didn't, you know, there wasn't... Um, the resources and the availability and the exposure to those types of things that you see more in movies and the internet and there's so many ways to research these things now than there was back then. Um, but what I realized as I went through the program is that I really wanted to work with top level artists and I wasn't necessarily thinking Whitney Houston, I was just thinking it's like I want to be working with the best people in the business. And uh, so I decided to move to New York. And that was another first step to me, because in taking that first step of getting into the program, I worked my way through and finished the program, and that was part of my goal. My next step was to go to a place where those people recorded. And in Boston, the studios and the setup there 
um, wasn't really, it wasn't a place where everybody went to, like major artists went to, to record. There were many major artists who were there, but it was not like New York. New York City had many more studios, uh, world-class facilities, and the majority of people either recorded in Los Angeles or New York and if it, uh, for country music Nashville. So those were the primary recording places. Those are my choices. So I moved to New York, and uh, that was my next step. And I got a place to live, sorted out all those things. Next step was to get a job. And that took me about six months. And um, one of the steps that I took, or one of the first steps that I took to get into a studio, because I became frustrated after six months of going through interviews, and I had a, I had a job in a video uh, a studio, um, a video production studio, delivering videotapes around town. And I always carried my resume in my bag. And one day I buzzed the door of the studio called Right Track. And I only knew a little bit about it from what I read from Mix Magazine. But I buzzed the door, and, and they said, are you here for the interview? And I said, yes, I'm here for the interview. Walked up. Ten minutes later, I'm sitting in front of the studio manager with my resume, and he's interviewing me, and I have no idea what I'm being interviewed for. Turns out that um, they were uh, ten minutes into the interview, he's like, you're not here to be a receptionist, are you? And I said, no, that's, that's not what I'm here. I want to be an engineer. And I told him my story and how I happened to even get in the door. And uh, luckily, he didn't kick me out. He, he actually laughed and he said, you know what, I really like you, um, but we don't need anybody right now. So, But he said, things change really quickly. You never know. You might get a call from me in two weeks. And uh, two weeks later, he gave me a call and said, I need you to start Monday. Quit my job that day and at the video um, recording place and uh, started work on Monday. Very first thing I deliver, did was I delivered a tape to Carly Simon. Knocked on her door. There's Carly Simon. Handed her a tape. I ended up recording her later in her career. I also ended up working with her ex-husband, uh, James Taylor. I recorded uh, their son and daughter, um, uh, Sally Taylor and Ben Taylor. And um, so this was sort of a, a one other step in the process. A week later, Mick Jagger came in to do a solo record. I ended up recording him on a record later. I worked my way up into the studio. So once I got into the studio, that was my first step. And then my step from there was building through the studio and making clients. Um, and through the course of doing that, I ended up on a session with Whitney Houston and I made a connection with her there. Um, uh, we worked together on her I'm Your Baby Tonight record. I was a second engineer on that record. and uh, But we made a connection, and I met her later at Electric Lady Studios, uh, ended up recording some work with an artist that she was producing. Uh, I had also done some mixing for the Bodyguard soundtrack, and... Um, then uh, she told me, through she remembered me, and she said, look, I, I built this studio. I need you to help me out and run it. And uh, I ended up being her uh, chief engineer for about the next 10 or 15 years. And so this started a process. Now, through that, taking that step, that simple step of like selecting a major and taking another step of going through um, the program and taking another step of moving to New York and taking another step of getting a job in the studio and taking those first steps all along the way, I ended up having all these incredible experiences. If you told me that when I was in high school, like a struggling guitar player trying to figure out who the hell I was and what I wanted to do for my life, that I would be recording the vocals of James Taylor, Carly Simon, Mick Jagger, David Bowie, um, David Byrne from the Talking Heads, Luther Vandross, and I could go on and on and on. I would have said, you're out of your mind. Um, well, I probably wouldn't have known who Whitney Houston was. She wasn't around then. But that's just thinking about that and working with those and all the things that came out from that started with a first step. Now, if I was also told like all the things and troubles that I would have to go through and all of the hard work and all of the things, it may have been a more difficult decision to, to actually take that first step. Um, I guess maybe knowing the results of that may be different, but it's, um, uh, it's something that's the most important thing. And all of this stems from a very simple quote about faith, and that is such an important part of any person's career. It's taking that first step towards something. You have no idea what that journey, how many, what the bumps and bruises, and what's going to happen along the way. But if you keep walking that path and you keep taking those steps and walking up, not knowing what the destination is, you'll find another step, another first step that you'll take that'll carry you to the next level and then carry you to the next level and carry you to the next level. Again, through all of my studio work, 
um, in working with all these major artists, I now have a school. And, um, and all of those amazing experiences now that I had and all the that, uh, records that I worked on and all the amazing people and producers that I work with, the reason why I have the school, what I realized is that I'm sharing all those ex incredible experiences that I had and bringing the information, the wealth of information that I've gathered from working with some of the greatest people in the music industry, greatest producers, uh, learning from the best engineers in the world. And that's the information that I provide. But it all came from having faith, from taking that first step. And that's why I thought this was, uh, you know, the most important thing to bring out. And that's a little bit longer than usual for the career building tips. But I think um, because of the message and the importance of it, you, you'll kind of see variations of this with a lot of the other tips. I thought it was uh, worth bringing on here, more than worth bringing on here. Okay, because I'm mixing with my career building tip. Take the first step.